let's do it. All right. Click. 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 I actually took a photo that time. Did you? Yeah. I, I took a photo too. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm interviewing Matt. I, I have five minutes because Trev Lee just told us we had to get back there. <laughs> so me and Matt, we've been trying to hook up. Years. Liter nerd, literally nerd. years. Years. Yeah. And we finally get to meet. So I'm going to interview you face to face. Yeah. I mean, but I'm going to be behind the camera. <laughs> yeah. So you enjoy your coffee and I'm going to come around. Let's do it. Let's do All it. Right. All right, Matt. So, yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about photography. Let's talk, man. I don't, and the funny thing is, you and I talk about photography for, for a living, yeah. or as part of our living. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I don't even know really what to ask you. I know, because I feel like you probably already know everything about me in terms of photography, yeah. and likewise, you know yeah. what I mean? We're, we're, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing when you follow someone, either on YouTube or Instagram, whatever it may be, and you know their kind of like story. Like yeah. last night we were doing the meetup, and someone was like, now, before this lens, you had the Summicron, but you sold that to do, you know, and it was like they were retracing my steps. And I'm like, yeah, like, it's kind of interesting and it makes it easy because I'm like, I don't have to explain anything. You guys already know everything there is to know about. Me, so know? maybe we could talk about being YouTubers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so you, you don't travel as much as me, but you recently you have started. Yeah, and yeah. And so you are, you, you live in a small in a small town, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. You, yeah. There's a lot of advantages living in a small town. Yeah, yeah. It's, like I, I've lived there my whole life and I love it there. You know, it's, it's at least the last time I checked, it was around 20,000 people. And uh, it was just like, especially with meeting my wife. She came to visit, you know, and we started dating. And she kind of early on was like, I love it here, this is great. I, I could see myself living here. And I was like, that's perfect, because I don't want to leave, you know what I mean? Like, I, I've always loved it there, so. But now that you travel, mm -hmm. explain how it feels to meet people that you've never met, and yet they know so much about you. It's, it's weird at first, for sure, because uh, like last night, this is my first time in California ever, so. Uh, it's that's just a whole new experience. What do you think about the California kids? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, the people that would like come up and they're like, yeah, I've watched your videos for you know this long and blah blah blah. Or they'd say like, uh, like one guy Eduardo that I met. He was like, you know, my mom is a nurse. Yeah, yeah, Eduardo. And he's like, my mom is a nurse, just like Molly, your wife. You know. And it's like people have gotten to know me and my wife and our family just through what I share. And it's really cool though, because like. I mean, with different things that have gone on with our family, we've had so many people reach out because they feel like they know us, you know? And it's like, I've made great friendships through social media, but coming out here, like you said, it's just a whole different experience, but it's awesome. Uh, it's something I never imagined myself doing ever. I mean, before doing like YouTube, I could have been like, no, I don't think I'll ever fly anywhere, ever. I don't have a need to, you know what I mean? I was just so, content almost like in my own little bubble my small town bubble and I loved it there and I still do um, but I've definitely grown a lot as a person and photographer I think from not only just traveling but getting to like spend time with other photographers and just pick their brain like I like doing that online as well you know and like for my podcast it's cool to like talk with other people but um, just being actually like physically with people, cameras in our hands. It's just, it's really cool. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's the analog way of meeting instead of yeah, digital. Yeah, 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 exactly. Literally. Exactly, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a tactile thing there. I can go up and hug somebody that I've talked to for years, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's cool, yeah. Yeah, because we've never physically met, mm -mm. but it's like we know each other. Never, exactly. Yeah, I know. As soon as we got out of the car, it was just like, cool, we've been friends for years. Yeah, but we finally get to actually hang out. Same with uh, Mike Padua, who's here, uh, Tim and Chris from the Analog Talk podcast. I've met with uh, Tim a handful of times since he's only in Tennessee. It's not too far from me, uh, but I've never met Chris in person. But, you know, these are just people that I talk to all the time online, and I see them online, and I watch their videos, and it's like, it's really cool, you know? Yeah, so. So these kind of conferences, uh, things that we're doing, that's kind of what we're trying to do is to bring yeah. together personalities, including YouTubers, yeah, podcasters, yeah. Right. writers, and we're hoping to grow this. So is there, is there a chance maybe that we can maybe meet in Hong Kong one day? That would be uh, that would be interesting. There, I I guess I shouldn't say that there's no possibility because if you asked me if I wanted to fly out here, you know, a handful of years ago, I would have been like, no, there's no way you're getting me to do that. You know what I mean? So I mean, uh, crazier things have happened for sure. So that that might end up happening one day. 
Well, we'll start slow. Maybe you can come to Canada. Canada, that's, that's on my list. I've never been to Canada, so yeah, never been to Canada. I've never been out of the country. So yeah. I'm telling you, like you said earlier, my world is expanding. <laughs> So we'll have to get you to Canada, to Vancouver. You'll enjoy Vancouver. Revolver. Come, revolver. Revolver coffee. I need I'll, to see. I'll get you there it is. Uh, actually, in fact, I, I promised you I would get you a hat. I need I'm a not, hat. I'm not going to do that anymore. I you need have to go to, get it. You have to come and That's fair. there's a free hat I, waiting for you. <laughs> I respect that. I'll, I'll come pick hat, it up. Multiple hats. Yeah. <laughs> if you want them. I'll take it. I'll you, take you it. I'm, I'm a hat guy. You want to say hi to Terry? Terry, good to uh, kind of talk to you this way at least. I'm waiting to come and get some of your coffee and one of your hats. So we'll make that happen for sure. <laughs> Terry's going to be happy. Yes. Um, one last question mm -hmm. is um, talk to us a little bit, like, you know, you're carrying your X-T3 like yeah, I am. Yeah. In fact, I'm recording yeah, you yeah. with your X-T3. So clearly, you know, like I think sometimes people think it's like film versus digital. Right. And guys like us like, hey, look, we scan our negatives. Yeah, we need that's digital. a digital. Yeah, it's part, it's, it's part of the process. We have YouTube. It's digital. We have yeah. Instagram. We're it's not all empty. It makes no. no sense. But can you explain a little bit of like how you feel about yeah. where there's an intersection, when they're different? So for me, a lot of it comes down to the process of shooting. You know, like I have carried this camera with me for almost six years now, and I love it. I have other digital cameras like the XT3. I've had digital Leicas before. It's just a different process. It's a different means, you know what I mean? Uh, when I first got into photography, I started with a Minolta XGM. I just absolutely loved the camera itself. I loved the process of it. And as time went on and I got my first DSLR, I still always carried the Minolta with me. Not because it gave me better results or even different results, because it did. It gave me different results shooting film. You get a different look for sure. But it wasn't really about that for me because I don't have an issue with the look of a digital photo. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess a raw file maybe isn't so pleasing. You'd want to kind of finesse it a little bit in, in uh, editing, but it's just the, the process of shooting. I just enjoy the mechanical cameras. I enjoy that kind of process. And it just, for me, uh, for years doing so much you know, like photography jobs, the digital camera really just felt like it was a work tool, you know, and, and my way of continuing to love photography but not feel like all I was doing was work was I'd grab my Minolta and I would shoot with it because it didn't feel like work. It was a different process and it was just a little bit different but it was still about photography which is what I love. And that's what I'm always trying to tell people is I love film, I love talking about film, that's why I'm here in California for the first time is because we're celebrating film photography. But uh, at the end of the day, if I'm going to leave any kind of impact, I want it to be about the love of photography first and foremost. You know what I mean? That's, uh, I mean, that's, that's, I don't care if someone shoots with an 8x10 or an iPhone. If you're making photos, more, especially for me, what I try to uh, encourage people to do is make photos of like their family and people that they love. And um, even if it's not just people, even if it's just your city, you know, if that's what you're passionate about, Make a record of that, you know, document that. And uh, that's what I'm always just trying to, to encourage people to do. Um, whether it's, like I said, digital or film, it doesn't matter. I will encourage people to try film at least because I think it's a good experience to have. But if someone just says, look, I, I've got an iPhone. I don't want to do any other photography other than with my iPhone. Do that, you know. It's, it's all just about expressing yourself with a camera or making photos that mean something to you. And... Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's that's just kind of how I see it. So <laughs> that's perfect. I think we're over five minutes. We might and, be, and maybe if we can, we'll do another video. Oh yeah. But for now, this is it. This is it. Awesome. If something happens to either of us, this yeah, is the last. This, this is, is the, the last only archive. <laughs> It's the only archive of I, I, I appreciate, as someone who has watched your videos for years, we've talked about it before. I appreciate you uh, letting me hop on here. And man, you know, if your dad was around, yes. he would have been... Talk about Hong Kong, yeah. <laughs> he would have been so excited that we actually got... Just like, you were the famous guy. Yeah, yeah, he would have. He totally would have. Absolutely. All That's right, awesome. so we'll close off because we're going to get in trouble soon. And yes. thanks for talking. Thank you. And thanks for bringing your, your M6. Yes. This, I should have bought my M7. It goes with me everywhere. Does it really? Yeah, This everywhere. goes with me everywhere because my digital kit's too big. I like... I've never tried the 35 Ti, but I've always admired oh, the camera. Philip has one. Maybe you can borrow it. Ooh. Make a video bar. about it, that'd be fun. Yes, yes. 
We might try and make that happen. That'd be cool. We should. Yeah. He'll he'll loan you one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure now it's on tape. He has I to. I feel like I'm a trustworthy guy. You are trustworthy. Okay, cool. <laughs> if you trust me, definitely trust you. <laughs> okay. Definitely. All right. Awesome. So thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Matt, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Happy shooting. All right. Click. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect. That was perfect. The difference, I think, between crop sensor to full frame compared to like 35 millimeters to 645, that's such a big difference. Film shooters don't care, but digital people, it's like, oh, that's not full frame. I'm not touching it. I don't think it's that big of a deal, really. Um, there are people here that are shooting 110 film, so your crop sensor looks like 8x10 compared to that. You know what I mean? So uh, I just really enjoy the cameras. They, they're built well. They're reliable. I've had other cameras, like I've tried a lot of different brands. Uh, Fujifilm cameras have always been reliable for me. I started when the first X100 came out. That was like a big just gateway, I think. So I bought that camera and uh, I've owned a lot of different Fuji cameras over the years, but yeah, it's just, it fits. It, awesome. it, it's all consistent, you know. Very good. Yeah. You, want, you can say hi to Billy and those guys too. Billy, what's up? Uh, Francis. I've known Francis for a long time just through uh, Instagram and stuff. So once he started working with the Fuji guys, I was like, that's awesome to see. Yeah, he's a good dude. So. Excellent. Yeah, right. yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah, awesome. Right See you soon, man. Water.